All right, so, you know, this is really, I guess, in a year, our first time of, you know, having a Monday after a loss, you know, coming back to meet with the players and practice and stuff. So that's a new challenge, um, you know, for our guys. And the biggest key is that, you know, one loss, you don't allow it to move into more losses. So, you know, I look at the game and, you know, the final score, and you guys know I don't give coach speak, and I told them today. You know, if you just look at the final score, you'd think, okay, well, they weren't ready to play. You know, they came in and got dominated, and that wasn't the case. You know, they, they started really well, didn't let the crowd affect them, and got up 17-3. And even after a lot of stuff, four minutes left in the third quarter, going into score, you know, to take the lead, and really played really poorly for the next 19 minutes after, you know, the interception. Um, on all three phases, but especially offense and defense. So, you know, we can't let that beat us again. We've got to learn from it. We've got to improve in certain areas. Um, we had too many penalties, um, some poor decisions on ones. You know, and I tell you guys, you got to understand stadiums you play in, crews that you have, you know, and, you know, there's – certain crews that officiate games. I'm not complaining. We just have to understand what it is. So, you know, like Alabama the week before were 17 penalties. And so um, we've got to do a better job with that, understanding um, all the things that go with that, and <clears throat> definitely finish games better um, than we did. So, you know, huge no time to sit around and mope with it. You know, we're getting ready to go um, play probably one of the top five rosters in America. Um, I think eight five-star players a year ago, most ever. So these guys are ultra talented and we're going to play one of the top five hardest places to play. So that's a combination obviously that makes you have to do a lot of things right in order to have a chance to win. So we got a lot of work to do this week um, and got to get better. After you talked to your team this morning, I mean, how did you think they responded at practice? What did you see? Well, it was just a walkthrough, but I think I think they were good. Um, again, just pointed out, okay, here's the things early we did really well in the game, and then here's where we fell apart. And you know, just like when we play a really good 19 minutes, we can't let that define us and say, oh, we're great now. Just like when we play a really bad 19 minutes, we can't let that you know, make us lose our confidence that, and, and we're no good all of a sudden. So, um, you know, like I said, we got to do better in a lot of areas. Penalties, red zone, um, I think two of five, two, two, only two touchdowns down there five times. Um, you know, that was, you know, we did not run the ball like we would like to, you know, and overplayed Q, you know, because, you know, Zach wasn't available, and um, you know Bentley really was questionable and limited. So I think he played 71 plays or something like that. So uh, that's not ideal, and hopefully we'll get healthy to help that. And we've just got to do a better job in a lot of areas. Offensive line obviously struggled down there Saturday. Do you ever think maybe that? Uh Perhaps some of the rotation within that group creates a little bit of consternation at times in terms of what they're doing? No, we only rotated one guy. So yeah. um, I certainly don't think that has anything to do with it. Lane, you guys responded really well last season after losses. I think it was three in a row after the first one, four in a row after the second one. Is there something kind of to be said about resetting and recalibrating after a loss? Uh, yeah, I think when <clears throat> I've said it, when you play, you know, really talented players in programs, you know, they will expose certain areas. And it's why, you know, when you play one of them super early or open with them, you know, you learn more about issues that you have. And sometimes they can be hidden until you go play, you know, one of, like I said last week, one like a program like the next three, you know, and I mean, they make recruiting rankings for a reason, you know, and Obviously, those have a lot to do with winning and, and draft picks. And so when you play really good players, you know, you've got to do things really well or you can't get away with some things you can versus some of the personnel we played early in the year. 
told us Saturday you had a high level of concern with the defense after their performance and you kind of sensed it after the way they struggled against Auburn after watching two weeks of tape. What are you kind of seeing defensively? Is it a personnel, schematic? I mean, what do you feel like needs to kind of be adjusted there? Well, we've got to tackle better. Um, you know, certainly hasn't helped Cedric not being available at all two weeks ago and being very limited and he tried to play but wasn't himself. Um, and then when Troy, you know, in both games, you know, having to come out to due to injuries, those are, you know, two really significant players. So, but we've got to tackle better and limit explosive plays, um, which is what we had done really well early, early in the year. And, you know, we showed them some film today just to make sure, like, hey, here's, here's some out from two weeks ago, you know, and how well in three weeks ago, Kentucky game and, and how well that we played and the energy that we played with and gang tackling. So it's not like we got to come up with it out of nowhere. We've done it. You brought up the talent level at A&M. Just I'm curious, what are the growing pains like over there where in your experience when you have a very freshman heavy team, what are the growing pains of getting those guys acclimated? And does it compare at all to a portal heavy team with the two kind of different recruiting strategies? Uh, I, don't, I don't know that. I don't know if anybody does because no one's, you know, had a class like like that he was able to sign. So um, you'd have to ask him that. But a lot of those guys play and play very significant snaps and are elite players. So, um, you know, you'd have to ask him that. A&M's had a pretty inconsistent season so far. What do you kind of see from their program from where it's at right now, and what mentality do you think they're going to have going into this game on Saturday? Well, I think they'll be very excited to play, and they're coming home after being on the road for a long time. Um, and their crowd's always, you know, one of the hardest places to play in the country. So um, I'm sure they'll come and, you know, be ready to get back on the winning track. and. Um, like Jimbo said, they were close in the game. It's not like they got blown out and and did some really good things to come back to make it a game in the end. And and at times, they've played great defense throughout the year. Um, so it's, it's going to be a, a big challenge. And then as a fellow Taylor Swift fan, I have to ask, what do you think of her album? And do you have a favorite song off of it so far? Well, I kind of feel like I shouldn't go into you know, which favorite song, because that'll start all the social media of why I picked that, because there is kind of a reason behind it. So I'll give it to you after a win, not a loss. Because then you guys will write good things about it when I say it. Hey, Lane, you, you referenced earlier that this is kind of new for this team, playing after a loss and whatnot. After you had pointed out to us things where y'all needed to improve and whatnot, but you kept winning, was there a little complacency among your guys? Um, I don't know. I don't want to magnify things just because you lose a game, just like I don't magnify that we're great because we win a game. Um, you know, so, <clears throat> but there, I said it like you referred to, I, you know, there were signs of these coming, whether it was, you know, once we had to drop back some protection things and, and the tackling on defense and um, limiting uh, easy completions and turning into explosive plays. So. Um, th those were magnified, and that's what happened. When you go play really good players in a really hard environment, your weaknesses get magnified. So um, we're going to have the same same thing this week if we don't fix it. Did you think your your guys kind of lacked a hard edge after LSU came back, those 19 minutes you were talking about? I think that's fair. Um, I think that's definitely a fair thing. Again, I don't give coach speak and – to say no like everyone else does. Um, I don't like how we responded after the, you know, interception, um, you know, which is why crowd noise is important and a factor. Just like we say we want it here, which we have the last couple games. You know, the left tackles turn in to talk to the tight end and the ball snapped and his back runs through and hits Jackson so he can't throw the fade to Malik and they get a interception. And then I do not like how we responded on offense or defense after that especially late in the game, you know, when we weren't going to win. But, um, you know, you just don't – you never like that. That's obviously what we like to do is run the ball at the end and finish the game out. And um, it, they did a great job of it. You talked about the volume that Quinshawn kind of had to play. If that has to happen again, is there a way to guard him against fatigue or does that just, is that just a product of playing a lot of snaps? Well, I think surprisingly – 
you know, when you watch, just like this is what man a deal and facts and you know when you watch you actually don't see it I mean he's in the last series of the game you know and like showed the team you know the game doesn't matter at that point so if you let the scoreboard affect how you play you know you're gonna worry about getting hurt you know not finishing runs and you know that last drive he's running over a guy you know to get two extra yards um, so I think he's just really special and was able to do that now you can't do that every game that'll eventually um, wear on you but um, He's just a unique kid and unique mindset to be able to do that. Did just having one running back alter the play calling strategy at all? Were you limited in what you could do with, with just Quinchon? I mean, th there's a little bit there, but, um, you know, we had really made a decision, you know, moving forward not to run the quarterback very much. So you didn't see him run very much in that game nor moving forward um, just from long term you know thoughts with that so um, obviously it would, be like, it would be nice to have the full healthy backfield when you do that Anything else for coach? all right thanks guys